Hi, everybody. It's Recruiting Animal, and this is the Recruiting Animal Show. The date is July 3rd, 2024. Tomorrow is Independence Day in the United States. So nobody's joining me here today. They probably all took off at noon if they came in at all today, and they're probably not coming in on Friday either. Tomorrow, Friday's a slacker Friday, okay? Uh, which is fine. I think people need vacations. And uh, however, I wanted to do the show, uh, but nobody else is going to join me. So I am going to take advantage of that and talk about things that the people who the animal crew doesn't usually like to talk about, okay? Or they would start heckling me if I, I went on. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is uh, breathing techniques to deal with bad nerves. Now, guys like Rich, and uh, Tommy Alasio, they probably never get bad nerves. But, you know, maybe you do. You phone somebody up for the 10th time. You're wondering, am I going to get through to this person? Am I ever going to get in touch with him or her? I would really like to recruit that person. Or you're doing business development, same issue. Or, and then you might wonder, uh, well, when I get on the phone, am I going to make a good presentation? Am I going to have some luck with this person? And so you, you, the phone's ringing. Or you get the receptionist, and then you're on hold for a while. And you're feeling nervous. Well, there's a, a breathing technique that they use in the military called combat breathing or tactical breathing. And it's it got a few different variations, but it's simple enough that you can use it while you're actually on the phone. Even if you're talking to somebody and while the other person is talking, you can use it on your end. And this is how it goes. There's a, an inhale, then you hold your breath for a second, and then you exhale, okay? Inhale normally, Hold your breath for a second and then exhale, okay? The holding your breath, I think it makes you tense, but just a tiny bit and then, so it gives you a greater release, a, rex, a relaxation when you exhale. So inhale, hold, exhale, okay? Now, I think even when you're doing something easy like that, it takes a lot of repetition to make it work for you, to make your body respond the way you want it to, to get in the habit, okay? so. Don't expect it to, it's going to work for you immediately, okay? There's uh, people who tell you their techniques, you're going to feel it immediately. Okay, maybe. It's not my experience. Now, there's uh, two other forms of this combat breathing I'd like to talk about. One of them, there's no hold. Uh, you just in, you slow, slow down your breathing, slow and then relaxed, slow and then relaxed. I've seen a number of uh, videos where uh, police are doing it that way. One very exciting video is actually a dashboard cam of a cop who's chasing some criminals at nighttime. And he's getting very agitated talking to the uh, radio person. And uh, she tells him, hey, slow down your breathing. And he does. And he becomes uh, more relaxed, you could tell a bit, and giving her better information. So. Uh, if you don't like the hold, I like the one with the hold. But if you don't like the hold, you can just slow down your breathing. But you know what? That takes practice too. Everything takes practice. But you have to make it really easy for yourself. Don't make it hard. Make it simple. And I'm saying that now because I'm going to introduce another version of it. Uh, and I think this one is not as good for on-the-spot use. I think it's good for practicing um, when you're not on the phone. And that's you inhale to a count of four, you hold your breath to a count of four, and then you exhale, you release to a count of four as well. And you can release through your nose or your mouth, whatever suits you, okay? But uh, here's the thing. If you don't do breathing exercises regularly, even a count of four, it doesn't sound like much, but it might be hard. So uh, I think all the smart teachers say, look, do what feels good for you. Because if you uh, find it hard, you're gonna get tense. The breathing exercise that is supposed to be relaxing you is making you tense. That's not what you want. You wanna enjoy it. You want it to give you pleasure so you can practice again. Because if, if it doesn't work, if it's hard to do, you're never gonna practice enough to make it worthwhile. So with this technique, if a count of two is better for you, don't worry that you it's too little. Do that, two, 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 and you're gonna, find it, you know, eventually you're going to work up to four. That's going to, don't try to do the hardest thing right away. I've made that mistake a, a million times. I'm not the brightest bulb. <laughs> okay. I, I, I always think, well, if I do the extreme, I'm going to get more benefit. No, I won't even do the exercise after a while or I'll hurt myself or something like that. So 
take it really easy on yourself. You know, there's some other um, techniques about building habits and things like that. I like the Kaizen, if you ever, uh, there's a guy named Robert, Robert Moore, M-A-U-R-E-R, -E and he teaches it. There's some discussions with him on YouTube, and he really stresses, you know, minimal effort is what makes it possible to do something on an extended basis. And I believe that's true. Okay, now I'm going to mention another breathing technique. Andrew Huberman is a very popular um, healthcare podcaster these days, huge. And he promotes the psychological sigh. And that's you inhale twice and then exhale through your mouth, the longer exhale. Okay, so first you inhale a bigger inhale, then you do a sniff to get a little more. It's like two sniffs, and then you release. So it's inhale, sniff, release, okay? Now he says you can do that twice the very first time you do it, and you're gonna notice immediate results. I don't think so. I think the combat breathing is better, but I think this might work if you practice it and do it a lot, right? Now, you know, I, I, he says that this has been tested in a lab, okay? So who am I to go against the statistics, his data, but that's just my personal experience. However, it's good to know, and you might like that better. There's another guy uh, who has anxiety disorder. I think, uh, I can't remember his name, Russell something or other. He's a, a medical doctor. And he says he likes that psychological side, but he likes doing three sniffs. So my point there, and he's he's a pro, he's an expert as well. And he, he uses these things himself too, um, because he's got a, pro he's got a problem. Uh, and so, that tells you that you can experiment with all these breathing techniques. But I think recruiters often need something, especially, you know, uh, if you're new at it to uh, to calm you down. Uh, there's the regulars on this show, Richie Rich Rosen and Tommy Pistachio Alasio. They don't need it, okay? In my opinion, they don't seem to get, they're extroverts. They don't get nervous talking to people, but other people do. Rich, mind the way, mind you, he says he's always afraid. Now, that's an interesting thing. You'd never know it from talking to him. But I think he's afraid of not making a million dollars this year. <laughs> okay. His standard is a little higher than the average person. Okay, which uh, brings me to an interesting, um, something else that I saw this week that was interesting. Uh, it regards to something Rich says uh, all the time. Uh, Rich is very direct, we know. Uh, maybe not as direct as it seems when you first talk to him about it, but you know, if a client is not answering his uh, emails or voicemails and he's got a good candidate and you know he wants them to get back to him he can be pretty blunt look if you want to work with me we're going to have to do it this way otherwise uh, what's the point i mean i'll lose the candidates till you get back to me or you're not giving me you know good details about why you're rejecting them i have to so he's blunt he's honest and uh that comes right to this thing you might know ryan holiday he is the I would say primary exponent, he's a young guy of uh, stoicism, which uh, was popular, I think, for about two years. You don't hear about it as much anymore on social media, but he's still putting out books about it. And he loves uh, Marcus Aurelius. He's the most famous stoic writer, I think. He was the emperor of Rome, you know, 2000 years ago or whenever. And uh, I tried to read his meditations. It's the most popular book. Uh, maybe I should get a better, <laughs> a better translation. I never found it uh, that interesting. I never made it all the way through. Although a lot of Stoic thoughts when uh, or Stoic ideas when presented uh, independently through uh, someone like Ryan, they seem very appealing. But this one I'm going to tell you about seems, I would say, appealing at first, but I think that's a superficial reaction, and I'm going to explain why. He says, Ryan says, his is his paraphrase of uh, Marcus Aurelius. He says, the only thing that matters in life is that you behave toward the crooks and liars you encounter with kindness, honesty, and justice, okay? You don't let the assholes, I'm quoting Ryan, don't hold me, to, don't take me to task for that, but I like his translation. You don't let the assholes change and corrupt you. Don't let them make you like them because that's how they can really harm you. The best way to get even with the crooks and liars being like you are now, or you want to become, you know, more kind, more honest, in spite of the way they're treating you. Well, that sounds good. Who doesn't want to be kind and just 
and honest. But I just told you a story about Rich Rosen, and it's one that every recruiter has experienced. The hiring manager is not working with you properly. So you can be kind. You can talk to him or her in a very polite manner. But, <laughs> you know, if you're honest, that's not so kind, is it? <laughs> because you're telling them, hey, you are screwing up. OK, yeah, I'm sending you these people. You're not giving me any decent feedback. You're you know, taking forever to get back to me. How am I going to work with you? It's impossible. And I'm going to walk. That's the justice. If you don't smarten up, I'm walking. OK, so how <laughs> how can you know, there's such a thing as the velvet fist you deliver. And I think Rich is very good at that. He delivers his messages, his tough messages in a delightful way okay he's you can listen to he's there's tons of recordings on the recruiting animal show of rich demonstrating his style and i love it okay it's fun to listen to him even if he's criticizing you however not many of us can do that and even him you know he's he'll tell these people that's crazy okay he's pretty blunt now the way he says it okay it's still, I'd say, within the bounds of kindness. But he's, he's going to say sooner or later, look, I'm not going to work with you anymore, okay? <laughs> That's kind as well. What's the point of us doing this search if you're making it impossible for me to fill it? So you might disagree with me, but I think the kindness part tends to be reduced the more honest and just you, <laughs> just you are. Because you're dealing with, uh, Ryan uh, said, crooks and liars and assholes, you don't have to be dealing with people who are bad. They're just foolish or they're arrogant or so whatever. They don't, as Rich always says, I'm quoting him. He's an expert. He's a, uh, he's a, uh, <laughs> I quote him a lot. Okay. But he says, they have to be a, a partner with you. And then for him, that means somebody who really does want to work as a, a team, a good team member with you. And if they don't want it, what's the point of working with them? There's lots of other recruiters as well who tell you, look, walk away from bad clients. It's not easy if you need if you need the business. But if you've got business, don't work with people who drive you crazy uh, uh, or tell them, look, we've got to work together. I think, uh, you know, again, Rich, I think he writes into his contract that if you don't reply to me within 48 hours, I, I'm not sure of that. So take that with a grain of salt. If you don't reply to the resumes I send you within 48 hours, my guarantee doesn't count. Something like that. There's some kind of penalty. OK, so anyway, I wanted to give that little speech about, you know, being kind. I believe that, you know, don't let these idiots, you know, if, if you're on Twitter discussing politics or something, <clears throat> if you disagree with somebody, it takes a second for these people to start calling you the worst names imaginable. OK, Nazi, idiot, stupid, fascist. It's, it's just because you don't agree with them. Right. Uh, <laughs> I consider that fascistic. OK, they're fascist bullies. OK, but. That's stupid. And, and I, I try to control myself there. Actually, I, I feel like saying the exact same back to them. But I say, look, if you want to have a conversation with me, we can't be calling names. OK, you decide. OK, whatever way you like. If you want to call me names, fine. But if you want to exchange some views, you know, what's the point? OK, I'm not going to do that to you. OK, so that's what I liked about Ryan's as well. If you meet these jerks like you're going to meet, you know, we meet all kinds, even uh, my, my Facebook group. Sometimes, you know, somebody will misunderstand somebody and they get very spiteful and angry and then they have a little flame war. And then I, I get I get reports. Hey, this guy, and I have to go delete a bunch of stuff. You know, try to control yourself. You're going to meet crazy people as well or not totally insane people. But in business and, and on social media, certainly you don't know everybody. You're going to get people who are just in a bad mood. They're not bad people, but you get them on a bad day or they're really stupid idiots. <laughs> And they, you know, for whatever reason, they feel they can abuse you. You don't want to be like them. You don't want to be like them. I, I think what Ryan said uh, really applies in that case. Uh, and uh, it takes some effort. OK, it, it hurts to take to, to, it sometimes to take a beating from somebody else and not give the same back <clears throat> in turn. OK, is there anything else? Uh, OK, here's uh, something else that's uh, I've talked about many times before, but I'm going to talk about again. And there's a guy, I don't know if he wants me mentioning his name. He's on uh, uh, LinkedIn all the time. He was uh, an enterprise software salesperson who made tons and tons of money. At least that's what he says. And I have every reason to believe him. But he had some personal failures, okay? 
that he talks about, they're embarrassing. Uh, and he sort of crashed and burned. And now he's uh, a consultant. I, I, I think it's, I'm not saying, you know, he's not doing it at the job anymore. So no wonder he's a consultant. I think he's probably, uh, he knows what he's talking about. And one of the things he says, and he's, again, made a lot of money selling to big companies. He said, don't be too humble. If you're a salesperson, don't be too humble. And, uh, you know, see the other per person at the other side as your equal, no matter what their title is. And I have a story I've told before here. You might not have watched every show uh, about a, a friend of mine who is a fantastic recruiter. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't think he had any ego problems or anything like that, but he became a recruiter when he was in his early 20s. And yet he was talking, he was, I think, working with uh, software engineers or some kind of engineers. And he was talking with directors in the company, uh, the client companies, and he would feel intimidated. Uh, you know, who am I? This is this guy's my father's age and he's director and uh, I'm a nobody. I'm a young nobody. And um, he found that what worked for him was he knew he couldn't work that way anymore. It was just too, uh, it, it screwed him up. So he decided to call everybody by their first name. Okay. He might have been 22. The other guy might have been 50. And, you know, a director of the company, he was still Bill or Mary or Jane or whatever. Okay, and he found that helped a lot. It took away his bad nerves. Now, uh, when I met him, he's not nervous. Okay, yeah, I can't imagine him being nervous about to anybody. Okay, so he succeeded, and I, I don't think it's his nature to be nervous, really. But he told me he was, and that this is the um, solution he chose. Now, there's going to be people who try to lord it over you with their position. Okay, I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I, how would you deal with them? You know, it's a, you call him Bill and he says, it's Mr. Jones. Okay. But then don't let him call you uh, Sam or Mary or Jane or whatever your name is. Okay. I, I'm using the most simplest names these days. I don't know if that's a good idea. Okay. But if, he, if he's Mr. Jones, you're Mr. Smith. Okay. Or uh, Ms. Uh, Carstairs or whatever you want it to be. Okay. Ms. Burns, whatever it is. I see in TV shows uh, and movies, the, the staff members, they call the boss Mr. or Ms. or whatever. And the boss calls them first names. Oh, Steve, get that for me. Because Steve, can you do that? Okay. Yes, Mr. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's like it's the military. I, I, maybe that kind of thing is necessary in the military where the enlisted men and women, they uh, salute the officers and call them sir or ma'am, but I don't think that's good in regular life, okay? Uh, I, I once went to a, a doctor, in fact, a, a number of times with a, a family member who was having some serious problems, and, you know, he didn't want to let me in to help with the explanation of the problem. It would have helped a lot because this guy accomplished nothing, okay? So let me preface it by saying he didn't do good work. OK, or at least he might think he did good work, but it was certainly not effective. It was useless. And um, yeah, when he finally let me in for five minutes to talk, uh, I, I, you know, he said, uh, can I call you by your first name? I said, what do you want me to call you? He said, Dr. So and so. OK, I said, well, no, you call me Mr. OK, Mr. Animal. <laughs> Why? Well, he, he was younger than me. OK. We're in a hospital. I know he's a doctor. Why does he? Have, why do I have to say it every time I talk to him? He, I don't make him call me headhunter. You know, who, who cares? Okay. Yes, doctor. Oh, oh, thank you, doctor. What's the point? I know he's a doctor. Okay. It's just his job. His mother can call him doctor. I'm sure she's very proud of him and thinks he's God's gift to the world. Even though I tell you. He was useless. And we went to another doctor, another doctor who's, you know, all the credentials on the internet. Okay. And while my family member was talking, he was looking at his Blackberry to check his email. These guys are, they're not gods. Okay. They're human. Full, they sometimes think, you know, they only think uh, of the wonderful work they're doing for humanity or the people who um, you tell them how wonderful they are like their parents, <laughs> I don't know, especially like the other guy was young, okay? Oh, my son, the doctor, you know, we know that story. But then she doesn't canvas his, uh, his patients, okay, to find out what it's really like. So my point is, these guys aren't so great. You don't have to call them 
you don't have to call them like they're uh, kings or queens or, or, or something like that. In fact, I have to tell you, we've got a king here now. We had a queen. And, uh, you know, I often thought if I had a chance to meet the queen, I might feel uncomfortable with all that protocol. You know, it, it, they're just people. In fact, since I watched The Crown, which are the first few seasons I actually enjoyed, especially the first one, um, yeah, you know, I don't. I, I I never opposed the monarchy, and you know that, that's how this country was founded. With lots of people have ties to it. I, I'm not against it, but I'm not for it anymore either. I mean, I I always sort of was kind of neutral, but <laughs> this is irrelevant. You don't care. But it it's kind of related to that. You know, these are ordinary people. You might have to call someone a queen or king or your highness, but behind it, who are they? Okay, your next door neighbor or your mom or dad might be better people than them. Okay, now they've gotten terrible jobs. Who'd want to be in that position? I mean, you know, it seems awful to me. And in fact, you can see with uh, Prince Harry, his wife married a prince, and then they had to blow because it was no more no fun. Um, is there anything else I should talk to uh, talk about? We're almost out of time. Let me just run through my. Uh, oh boy, you know, here's a situation I found interesting. Uh, unfortunately, there was some kind of uh, there was a murder here. Um, of uh, a family, uh, a lovely young woman. Um, I think she came here from Vietnam. She was 40 years old. She looked very young, so that's why I use that term. And they showed a picture of her with her baby, and she was married, uh, I think, with a husband and a young son as well. And someone they knew came in to the house. And I don't know if they had some kind of, uh, I don't know what was going on. It's not been revealed, but uh, she was shot and killed. Uh, and then, her, so her brother was talking, they talked about her, and her name was Thi Trang Do. I think that's how you say it. And it said she came from an accounting background in Microsoft, but she grew tired of the monotonous routine and became a realtor. Okay, she became a real estate agent. And her brother said she wanted to talk to more people, which I was surprised about because she was such an introvert. But she loved that job. And she loved helping people and her clients trusted her a lot. Now, I was surprised. She was an introvert, her brother said. But, you know, there's a difference between being shy and being an introvert. Being an introvert means you're not outgoing. You don't love talking to people, okay? But uh, being shy means you're afraid of them. My guess is that she wasn't afraid. And that's very significant. Okay, so I have very rarely I've seen, you know, lots of articles. I've said here many times the way people talk about introversion, it's like a disability. Okay, uh, apparently it helps people if they're uh, senior executives because they don't have the same kind of warmth and affection for members of their staff. They don't mind criticizing them or firing them as much as some extrovert might, who's like a puppy dog and depends on uh, people uh, liking him or her. Uh, but, you know, introversion sounds like a disability most of the time. But even if it isn't, shyness definitely is. And I've never seen people, say, you know, you'll write lots of articles about, hey, you can be a sales rep, very successful, and be an intro, even if you're an introvert. You can do this and that and be an introvert. I've never seen any articles that say, hey, you can be really shy and be a good salesperson. So I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Uh, but, uh this young woman who met an unfortunate end, unfortunately, though, uh, unfortunate, that, that's not a good way of talking. But anyway, she she was that. Apparently, her brother said she was, you know, maybe quiet. Uh, that's Maybe that's why she went into accounting to begin with. But she became a, a very good salesperson, you know, who uh, was a, a nice person, okay, <laughs> that that her clients could trust her. She built her brand on, on that. So, But she had to be willing to uh, approach people and get orders, get listings for the real estate uh, and maybe get people who were looking for houses. You know, maybe she, she comes from a Vietnamese, Vietnamese background. Maybe she could uh, draw on that ethnic community. I'm not sure what the key to her success is or was, but I'd, I'd love to hear it because it sounds like an interesting story. Anyway, with uh, a lot of rambling, I'm gonna conclude this special uh, American Independence Day <laughs> solo show. OK, uh, actually, I used to have uh, tons of people calling in when we were just on uh, audio uh, to be the animal crew. And it was uh, fun with lots of people, uh, but it was a lot harder to manage because you can't see when someone wants to talk. Uh, um, but here on video, it's, it's much easier to manage the show. 
Uh, the thing is, we used to have, you know, like six regulars, but there's been a lot of fall off lately. So I'm wondering in the future, uh, I'm either going to have to drum up some more, uh, <laughs> some more people to come on the show, or I, I might do more shows uh, just on my own, shorter shows for specific topics that uh, I particularly enjoy. Okay. Happy Independence Day, Americans, and uh, see you next time, everybody else.